This is a legit Thunderbolt eGPU for as cheap as only $100 on sales and today we'll test it with this Knockbox mini PC by GMK Tech and my personal gaming laptop, so let's talk about that. This is Hubwood. Okay, so you can order this eGPU station by the brand Wikingu on AliExpress for around $120 and sometimes even as low as $100 on sales, which is probably by far the cheapest price new eGPUs have been available yet. It actually arrived quite fast in less than 10 days and in my case I paired it with a used 450 watt system power 7 PSU by Be Quiet which I bought for only $22, including shipping used on eBay, because it offers two PCI Express power lanes. So the total cost would be around $122 to around $150 without the GPU. And for today's test, I used two regular NVIDIA desktop GPUs, one being this GTX 1070 Ti, which you can actually get for as cheap as around $100 used or even less on eBay these days, and I also tested it with my personal RTX 4070, which at least in Europe you can get for around $550. Now the package for the eGPU is super small and cheap looking. You'll actually have to assemble it for yourself, which by the way is super easy and only took me around 10 minutes without a manual. You just need to tighten some screws, install the PSU and the GPU and you're good to go. Don't worry about that, a 10 year old could do that. They also include a 40 gigabit per second cable, which allows you to use Thunderbolt 3 and 4 ports, as well as most USB-C 4 ports. So this would work with a Lenovo Leech Go, an MSI Claw, most higher-end mini PCs and corresponding laptops as well. In order to get things going, you need to make sure to first start up the GPU um, and after that you can turn on the device you're planning to use. And it basically should just appear in the Windows Device Manager and I didn't even need to deactivate the integrated Intel graphics for the mini PC or in the case of my laptop, the dedicated RTX 3070 Ti it already comes with. Now a Thunderbolt eGPU is quite heavily bandwidth restricted by the Thunderbolt maximum throughput of 40 gigabits and we're shortly going to see what that actually means in terms of gaming or stuff like 3D rendering. But before we look at some gaming results, let's start with some synthetic benchmarks. Spoiler alert, be aware that they are a bit misleading compared to actual gaming results, but more on that in a bit. If you're interested in the utilized mini PC, check out my review of the Knockbox K9 by GMK Tech over here. To quickly bring you up to speed, it comes with an Intel Core Ultra 5 125H with 14 cores and 18 threads, 32 GB of DDI5 5600 MHz RAM, and a Thunderbolt 4 port. The mini PC's default 3 Mark Firestrike score is around 6844 points and with the GTX 1070 Ti installed it already scored 14759 points which is an increase of 116 percent meaning more than double the points. And with the RTX 4070 Ti installed it achieved a whopping 24837 points which is 262% more. So it's close to four times as much and 69% more than for the 1070 Ti. But for comparison with my desktop system and the RTX 4070 featuring a Ryzen 7 7700X, I get a total score of up to 35,816, which is another 44% more than via the eGPU. For Time Spy, the base result is around 3290 points, while with the GTX 1070 Ti installed, it achieved 6572, an increase of almost exactly 100%, and 13963 points with the RTX 4070, an increase of 324%, so more than four times as much. And again, for comparison, with my desktop system, I get a total score of up to 16,800 in time spy, which this time is only around 20% more than via the eGPU. And for my Gigabyte Oros 15 laptop with an Intel i7 12700H and the RTX 3070 Ti Mobile, I also quickly tested time spy, but here I only tested the RTX 4070 because, of course, the 3070 Ti Mobile would already be much faster than the desktop. GTX 1070 Ti. 
So here the base score for time spy is 10,790 versus 13,946 points when I was using the eGPU with the RTX 4070, which is a smaller increase of only 29% and basically the same overall score as for the mini PC with the eGPU and the 4070. For Blender 4.1, I rendered the newest demo file image with my laptop. Here the eGPU can really make a lot of sense. The laptop's RTX 3070 Ti alone needs 176 seconds to finish the rendering, while the RTX 4070 via the eGPU needs 140 seconds, which is not that much faster, mainly because both cards have the same amount of NVIDIA's CUDA cores, which are a key factor for Blender. But rendering the same image with both GPUs activated at the same time now only takes 80 seconds, which is less than half the time the laptop needs without the eGPU attached. In that case, it would actually make sense to use an even faster GPU like a 4080 or 4090. But for gaming, that's not always the case. Now let's finally look at some games I've tested on the GMK Tag Mini PC with all three possible GPU combinations. For Hogwarts Legacy, I was using 1080p with medium settings and FSR on quality, whereas the Arc iGPU is not able to achieve a stable 30fps. In this case, the GTX 1070 Ti already gets around 50 to 60fps most of the time, which is quite similar to what we saw in the 3D Mark benchmarks if we consider the increase in performance. The RTX 4070 is able to reach FPS in the mid 60s which is much less than what it could achieve in a desktop PC. We can really see how it's held back and only uses around 85 watt while gaming with a utilization of only around 55%. So the 40 gigabit bandwidth of the Thunderbolt port is a real bottleneck here. Though even the GTX 1070 Ti isn't running at its full power since it's only using around 115 watt instead of its native 180. Just for fun, I also tested the 4070 at 1080p with ultra settings and DLSS on quality in combination with Nvidia's frame generation for Hogwarts Legacy, which actually worked perfectly. With around 100 to 120 FPS, it really benefits from that fast GPU and frame generation. This way, it was also able to pull more power than before. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at 1080p and high settings, the GTX 1070 Ti is already almost three times faster than the Arc iGPU, while in this case the RTX 4070 was barely faster most of the time, being once more held back a lot, though this time both desktop GPUs were able to use a higher wattage. Interestingly, in some short scenarios, the RTX 4070 was able to perform much better and then slowed down once again. For Cyberpunk 2077, I used medium settings and FSR on quality. Once more, the GTX 1070 Ti was already much faster than the Arc iGPU, while the RTX 4070 once more wasn't able to show its muscles and seemed to be held back quite a bit. I also want to point out that in all cases, the frame times weren't optimal with quite some visible micro stuttering. Once again, I try to let the RTX 4070 play out its muscles at 1080p with the Ultra Ray Tracing preset in combination with DLSS quality and NVIDIA frame generation activated. This was very playable with over 60 FPS, while even in this scenario the FPS dropped to the mid 40s in some scenes. This is quite interesting and most likely engine related whenever the eGPU is becoming a hard bottleneck due to the bandwidth limitation. The performance difference was even smaller in Far Cry 6, which seemed to really have issues with accepting the eGPU. At 1080p and high settings, I only saw small improvements for both the GTX 1070 Ti and the RTX 4070. A tiny difference of only a few FPS, not worth the effort or the money. And that became even worse with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as for some reason the RTX 4070 was even slower than the GTX 1070 Ti and I doubled and triple checked everything but unfortunately I was not able to find the cause for this problem. While the GTX 1070 Ti was quite faster than the Arc iGPU, it still struggled with a smooth frame time graph and showed a lot of stuttering. It really seems like this game is heavily relying on good bandwidth or something else I couldn't identify.
So using a fast GPU would probably not really make sense with this Thunderbolt based eGPU, at least for gaming, and it also depends on the title. We would most likely see better results with an Oculink based eGPU with its bigger bandwidth, while Oculink isn't as common as Thunderbolt or USB 4. I think the GTX 1070 Ti is actually a good and cheap fit to boost your gaming performance and give you some extra oom for work related tasks as well. But I probably wouldn't get anything faster than an RTX 3060 if you only need it for gaming. For stuff like 3D rendering or video editing, on the other hand, it could make a lot of sense though. If you want to test the Viking Go eGPU yourself, you can use the link in the description. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button or subscribe to the channel. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.